watching your feed am let's get into this conversation now the war in gaza has caused divisions around the world with some supporting israel and some uh, favoring palestine well here at home the government has reaffirmed its stance on the war calling on the two f fighting parties or two warring factions to basically negotiate a peace process let's get some views now of the Freedom Front Plus, and this is uh, one of the parties represented in Parliament. Dr. Corne Mulder is the party's foreign affairs spokesperson. Dr. Mulder, thank you very much for your time. Let me first get uh, your party's position on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Where do you stand? Yes, well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I would like to start off by saying I can't think that there could be any difference of view or difference of opinion under the current circumstances, there should be a united position throughout South Africa and throughout the world. Clearly, may one, anyone may have different positions on the question of Palestine and the question of Israel. But that is not what it's about at the moment. What it's about at the moment is that there was a terrorist attack on the state of Israel in which, in which 1,400 civilians were killed. And that should be condemned across the board. I'm still waiting for the ANC to do so. Mm. Well, you talk about the ANC, the party holding uh, its meeting of the highest decision-making body uh, this past weekend. I just want us to listen for a moment to one of the uh, references to this ongoing war by the party's president, Cyril Ramaphosa. Let's just take a listen to what he had to say. The ANC-NEC has condemned in the strongest terms the brutal killings of civilians by Hamas. The ANC also has been perturbed by the genocidal and atrocious activities of the State of Israel, which are being directed indiscriminately at Palestinian citizens, shutting them off from all forms of livelihood. On Saturday, we conveyed our condolences to the affected citizens on both sides, may I add, of this conflict, and called for the immediate cessation of these hostilities and a return to negotiations along the two-state solution option. Dr. Mudo, there you have the ANC president, and I think... You'll correct me if I'm wrong. It is the first time that we are hearing the ANC using the words condemn in the strongest terms the brutal killing of civilians by Hamas. That particular comment, of course, it encompasses yes. exactly what has been going on there because they also are particularly perturbed, as he says, about what he sees or what the ANC sees as a genocidal war against the people of Palestine. What do you make of that comment? We are making progress. We are making progress. The fact that the president is prepared to condemn Hamas unequivocally, that I welcome. But it's not the question here that you can balance one point of view with the other because the second part of his statement is simply factually not true. Israel is not just in a genocidal process targeting Gaza. That's absolutely clear, and we can talk about that. The fact that they are asking the civilians to, to move to the south of the country is to prevent exactly that. But the opponent who are attacking Israel are making use of hiding behind civilians. And despite of that, Israel is making use of precision, laser-guided ammunition to prevent uh, fatalities and to... to prevent injure as far as possible to civil, to civil uh, people in, in, in Gaza. So I welcome the fact that the ANC at last found it in their hearts to condemn that uh, indiscriminate terrorist attack. But then again, the ANC goes a little bit later and they are proudly standing around with all their little uh, Hamas and, and Palestinian flags and supporting that. And then the ridiculous part, then the ANC says the government is ready to mediate. Nobody is taking the ANC government seriously, and I can assure them, surely Israel will never ask them to come and mediate. Their stance is quite, quite clear. They are absolutely in support of Palestine, and they are not in support of finding a peaceful solution at all. No, not at all. Dr. Mulder, I'm going to challenge you a little bit here. You're welcome. When you, say, when you say that what is being done by Israel on the people of Palestine is not genocidal, 
Does yes. the prevention of water, electricity, food, it, it, does that not amount to a government that wants to completely, completely wipe out a particular race here? What do you make no, of that? No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. One needs to see that in the circumstances of the moment. Uh, all those things are supplied to Gaza throughout under all normal circumstances continuously. Ward, food, uh, food, everything is being allowed through, and that is the normal situation. But we are not having a normal situation at the moment. Israel has just been attacked by the worst terrorist attack since ever in, in Israel itself. And they need to take the necessary measures to retaliate and to react to that. Uh, unfortunately, there is the circumstances at the moment, and the sooner they can, if, 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 if Hamas releases the hostages tomorrow, the whole thing can end. But they are not prepared to do that, and any state will have the right to protect themselves and to do what is necessary. Mm. Um, it's, it's not a genocidal attack or the idea. If, if Israel really wants to wipe out the Gazan people from the face of the earth, <laughs> Just imagine for one second, more than 6,000 bombs have been dropped on, 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 on mass targets. Casualties, 2,970, but there are more than 2 million people in Gaza. It doesn't sound to me like it's, a, it, it, it's aimed at the civilian population, not at all, and we know that's the fact. But these people can't move. Dr. Mulder, we're going to be stuck on this, because I, I, no, I honestly have very strong views, but nonetheless, I want us to so place this. So do I. I want to place yes. this in the context, in the South African context, given... Our past. Do you believe that this war between Israel and Palestine holds a particular significance for our country, given where we come from? Why would you say that? And I'm, I'm saying this purely because the ANC government is of the strong yes. belief that Palestinians are suffering an apartheid-like oppression. It's not perpetrated true. by Israel. No, it's simply not true. That's part of the propaganda from that side to equate Israel as an apartheid state. It's simply not true. If it isn't true, Dr. Molden, if, you yes. if you've been listening to Dr. Naledi Pando, she says there are separate <laughs> entrances for Palestinian people versus the Israelis. There are documents that differentiate them. And no, the Palestinian no. people are saying that they are being treated as subhuman. It's not true. It's not true. There are Palestinian members of parliament in Israel. It's not true. I was in Palestine and I was in Gaza and I was everywhere last year. And, and maybe the Minister of Foreign Affairs should go sometime herself and go and see what's going on in Israel. It's not correct. Um, there's no distinction or no apartheid measures between the citizens of Israel. And many citizens of Israel are not Israelis. They are Palestinian. It's something else. It's something different. Mm. But I know it's part of, the, it's, it's part of the, the narrative being created that Israel is an apartheid state and that it worked for South Africa. Now let's see if it doesn't work for Israel as well. It's not going to work. Israel is something different. It's something else. And Israel did not attack the, the Gaza at this stage. Uh, Israel did not attack Hezbollah in, in the north of, of Israel, in, in Lebanon. Israel has been attacked, and obviously they've got the right to protect and defend themselves. If Israel wanted to indiscriminately re target the civilians in Gaza, why would they ask the people for their own safety to move to the south? Why? Because the targets, the military targets of, of Hamas are in the north of Gaza Strip. That's why they try to protect the people. Why does Israel send SMSs to people in, in buildings, warning them if, if, if there's going to be an imminent strike on a, on a civilian building being used by Hamas to vacate the building to prevent any, any casualties? Dr. I didn't see Hamas sending any SMSs to the citizens of, of the southern part of Israel when they attacked them last Saturday. No, they, did. they went there on purpose and killed more than 260 young people at the peace rally, at a peace uh, rave, just for the sake of killing Jews. And in the process, they killed a lot of other citizens from other countries as well. Yeah. Dr. Mulder, uh, you make a point that why would Israel ask a particular population to move from yes. the north to the south? And yes. I will ask you the time period within which these people are expected to move. Over a million people within 24 hours. Do you think that they could really make that journey given the... And, Given well, the constraints against them, food, water, yes. <laughs> fuel being cut off, really? Yes, well, 
No, the, 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 time, the, the time given were, was extended to when it became clear that it's not going to be possible to move within that time frame. Israel has not started with any land invasion, as far as I know, into, into Gaza to take care of Hamas. And obviously, Israel is in contact with Egypt in, in terms of the border at, in the south of Gaza, which they share with, uh, which Gaza shares with Egypt. And um, if possible, I, I don't think that it will be a question of not allowing those kind of uh, assistance to get, get to the civilian population. But um, in the meantime, Hamas is free to release all those prisoners which they took hostage. Yeah. Civilians. Two quick questions to you. People, civilians. Two yes. quick questions to you before we end the conversation. You, you sure. made an interesting point that in South Africa, this notion of apartheid, it worked for this country, but... It's not going to work in the Israel-Palestine um, situation. Do, do you believe, does the, e no. the Freedom Front Plus believe that indeed there was apartheid in South Africa and that indeed this was a crime against humanity? I think you misunderstood me when I said it, was, it worked in South Africa. It worked from the, from the perspective of the ANC to use apartheid, obviously as a rallying call to further their aims. That's what, I'm, what I've been saying. And I said right. the same is now being tried by the Hamas and others to isolate Israel, but it's not going to succeed in Israel. So I was referring to that. Okay, no, cleared. Final question to you. Parliament recently voting to downgrade South Africa's embassy in Israel to a liaison office. You yes. are a party represented in Parliament. Did you vote in support yes. of that? No, we voted against that. We think it's a huge mistake. You know, Israel has got all the technology and are prepared to assist our country with all the humanitarian things that we need in terms of South Africa is a very water-scarce country. Israel is more so, but believe it or not, Israel no longer has a water problem with technology. They've solved that. They are prepared to reach out to South Africa, but South Africa doesn't want that because we want to position ourselves as a country with all the rogue states in the world. Be that Libya, be that Venezuela, be that Cuba, that's where the ANC wants to position themselves. And in the process, they are isolating South Africa in the eyes of the world, but that's the ANC's stance, and they are isolating themselves by doing what they are doing at the moment. Dr. Conor Mulder, thank you very much for your time and indeed the party's views on the Israel-Palestine conflict. All right. Still to come, the markets update with 